Men and women who explore the Earth's caves face great dangers. So, here are the most disturbing cave incidents caught on camera. Starting with Floyd Collins, who was a cave explorer from Kentucky and who sadly passed away in Mammoth Cave in January 1925, after a dramatic and well-reported effort to rescue him. In the annals of cave exploring history, his story is one that is both courageous and heartbreaking. Floyd Collins had a substantial amount of expertise in the field of cave exploration and had a strong desire to find new caverns. At the beginning of the 1920s, he started exploring a number of caves that were located close to Sand Cave. For those who don't know, Sand Cave is situated in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, not too far away from the well-known Mammoth Cave system. So, Collins found a spectacular passageway that had not been seen before, and he gave it the name Crystal Cave because of the breathtaking formations that he found there. His goal was to acquire the rights to the cave, which was thought to be a part of the greater Mammoth Cave network, and to transform it into a tourist attraction that could be used for economic purposes. However, during his exploration of a tiny corridor in Sand Cave on January 30th, 1925, Collins found himself in a precarious situation. A boulder moved and jammed his right foot against the cave wall, causing him to get trapped in a tiny, constricted spot around 55 feet into the cave. He was crawling down a narrow crawlway at the time to escape the situation. Despite his best attempts, he was unable to break out of his confinement. He made a cry for assistance, and after a few hours, his brother, Homer Collins, was able to locate him, but he was unable to rescue him. For many days, Floyd remained confined. The technical complexity of the operation, the weather conditions, and the challenging terrain all contributed to the difficulty of the rescue mission, which entailed excavating through solid rock in order to reach Collins. Throughout many days, several teams attempted to retrieve him using a variety of techniques. However, each of their efforts was unsuccessful. While this was going on, Floyd, who was suffering from dehydration and exposure, continued to make calls for assistance. Also, the effort to save the person caused a sensation in the media, and newspapers all throughout the nation covered the event. Nevertheless, after 17 days of putting in a lot of work, Collins' position became more and more disastrous. As a result, the body belonging to Floyd Collins was discovered on February 16, 1925. It is believed that his death was the result of a combination of weariness, exposure, and the physical toll of being imprisoned in the chilly, tight environment for such a long period of time. Next up, we have Peter Verhuzel, who was a cave explorer and researcher from South Africa. So, Verhuzel was involved in the investigation and excavation of the Sterkfontein Caves, which are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and are considered to be one of the richest fossil sites in the world. The town of Sterkfontein, which is situated in the cradle of humankind's neighborhood close to Johannesburg, is well known for its Australopithecus bones and has made major contributions to the study of human evolution. As a seasoned spelunker and a member of the cave research community, Peter Verhuzel was intimately engaged in excavations at Sterkfontein beginning in the early 1950s. He collaborated with important experts, such as Robert Bloom, a pioneering South African paleontologist during this time. Also, it was because of Verhuzel's efforts that significant hominid fossils and animal remains were discovered during the mapping and excavation of the caves. Sadly, Within the early hours of the morning of January 8th, 1957, Peter Verhulsel was engaged in an incident that occurred during an excursion to explore a portion of the caverns that had not been visited before. During the course of a normal assessment of a particularly hazardous section of the cave system, Verhulsel found himself unable to escape from a passageway that was very small. In other words, it had been difficult to get access to the tunnel, and it was not long before Verhulsel came upon a rock fall that prevented him from breaking out of the cave. So, he couldn't escape the cave's boundaries, which were dark and tiny. As soon as his fellow explorers became aware that he had vanished, they immediately began an endeavor to rescue him. However, the mission proved to be challenging, owing to the intricate network of channels inside the cave, as well as the severity of the rock fall. 
Despite the fact that the team did all in its power to get in touch with Verhulsel, they were unable to do so in time. The body of Peter Verhusel was ultimately extracted from the cave after a search and rescue effort that lasted for three weeks. Moving on, the term Mossdale Cavern Disaster refers to a sad event that took place on April 24, 1967, in the complex cave system known as Mossdale Cavern, which is situated in North Yorkshire, England. There were seven cavers in all, six of them were male and one of them was female. Michael J. Langford was the leader of the group. The party intended to go through the cave in a reasonably short amount of time, which entailed traversing a small and low passageway that was referred to as the Final Crawl before arriving at the main room. On the other hand, as they were exploring the cave, the water levels rose swiftly due to the heavy rain that was occurring upstream. Within a short amount of time, Mossdale Cavern which included a convoluted network of water channels and confined passageways that were submerged, became flooded. Even though the group made many attempts to flee, they were unable to locate higher ground or a way out of the situation. However, two members of the group, Langford and another caver, were able to make it through the increasing waters and make it to the entrance, which is when the catastrophe happened. They informed the authorities about the accident, and a rescue effort, including a significant number of people, was implemented. Despite the efforts of rescue personnel and caving professionals, the corpses of the six cavers who were trapped within the cave system were never found from the cave system. It is thought that they died as a result of a mix of drowning and the tiredness that they experienced as a result of being struck in the flooded cave for a number of hours. In addition to being one of the first large cave rescue operations in the United Kingdom, the rescue effort was also responsible for the development of new procedures and methods for cave rescue. Since then, Mossdale Cavern has been considered to be among the most dangerous caves in Britain. Next up, we have the Cave Creek Disaster, which was a sad event that took place on March 28, 1995, close to Cave Creek, Arizona. It was a group of 14 persons, most of whom were high school students, who were hiking in a tight desert canyon when they were killed by a flash flood. Also, this particular occurrence is widely regarded as one of the most catastrophic flash floods in the annals of United States history. On the day of the accident, a group of 14 people, 10 of whom were high school students and four of whom were adults, set out on a hiking expedition in the Cave Creek Canyon, which is situated in the Tonto National Forest, which is located to the northeast of Phoenix. The hikers were part of a recreational expedition that was arranged by the Scottsdale Baptist Church organization. So, the members of the group were not aware of the terrible weather conditions that were becoming more prevalent upstream. While the group was making their way through the rocky canyon that was tight, the waters of the stream suddenly swelled, and there was very little time for the hikers to respond to the circumstance. As a result, they were caught by the swiftly running water in the small canyon, which swept several of the hikers downstream. During the time of the flood, there was no warning mechanism in place to inform the group of the danger, and as a result, the hikers were caught totally off guard. A total of 14 people, seven men and seven women, ranging in age from 14 to 42, lost their lives as a result of the fast-rising floods despite the fact that they made frantic attempts to save one another. Also, a huge search and rescue effort was launched due to the incident, which included the participation of local officials, rescue personnel, and volunteers. Although it was finally possible to rescue the remains of the victims, the speed and force of the flood left very little room for the possibility of escape. The Cave Creek disaster, which occurred in the aftermath of the disaster, brought to light considerable concerns about the dangers that are presented by flash floods throughout arid areas. Moving on, the incident known as the Namtalu Cave Disaster took place on July 23, 2003, inside the Namtalu Cave System that is situated within Khao Sam Roy Yot National Park, which is situated in the southern province of Prachuap Kirikan in Thailand. There were eight individuals who lost their lives as a result of the catastrophe, including six children. It is still considered to be one of the most catastrophic cave-related incidents in the history of Thailand. 
A party of 18 visitors, including six children and five adults, embarked on a guided tour of Namtalu Cave on the day of the incident. For those who don't know, Namtalu Cave is a well-known tourist site that is famous for the stunning stalactites and stalagmites that it contains. So, the cave was entered by the group in the late afternoon, with a local guide serving as their guide. Even though the cave itself is notorious for its rough topography, underground streams and tight passageways, it was regarded as a location that was accessible to travelers who had prior expertise exploring caves. On that day, a violent tropical storm had been bringing considerable rainfall in the area, but the group was unaware of this throughout their time together. The rain caused the water level within the cave to suddenly and dangerously increase, which is a situation that often occurs when there is a risk of flash flooding. As the party proceeded farther into the cave, the water level suddenly rose, which resulted in the visitors being trapped within the cave all by themselves. Being unable to flee the rising floods, the group found itself in a precarious situation. Despite the attempts of the guide to lead the group back toward the mouth of the cave, the floods rapidly increased to the point where they were overpowering. During the confusion caused by the water, the group was tragically split from one another. Numerous members of the group were carried away by the water as it rushed through the tight channels at a high pace. Although some members of the group were successful in locating higher ground, the rising waves managed to leave them trapped. In the end, eight of the visitors, including six children, perished as a result of drowning in the cave system that was inundated. However, three adults were able to escape and went on to inform the authorities Despite the fact that local authorities and rescue teams initiated a massive search and rescue effort, the corpses of the victims were not found until several days after the first search and rescue operation. The sad event brought to light the risks associated with cave exploration, especially during the monsoon season when caverns that contain subterranean rivers are more likely to experience flash floods than other caves of the same kind. Next up, we have an incident known as the Plura Grotta Cave Incident that took place on October 31st, 2004, in the Plura Grotta Cave, which is situated in the vicinity of the town of Plura in Nordland County, Norway. The sad catastrophe, which resulted in the deaths of two expert cavers, is one of the most famous caving tragedies that Norway has ever encountered. Cave explorers Henning Bola, who was 33 years old, and Kjell Inge Hegstad, who was 39 years old, were both victims. Also, both of them had considerable knowledge of subterranean ecosystems and were well experienced in cave exploration. The cave system known as Plura Grotta was notorious for its lengthy and tight passageways, as well as its rough topography. The cave, which is situated in a remote and mountainous section of Norway, is among the most popular destinations for experienced cavers because of its length, which spans many kilometers. Bola and Hegstad, together with a number of other cavers, entered the cave on the day when the incident occurred. So, an area of the cave system that needed technical competence and advanced caving capabilities was going to be explored by them. Nevertheless, as they were deep into the cave, a sequence of occurrences that were abrupt and unexpected took place inside. They were unable to leave the area because of a rock fall that happened in one of the small tunnels. The channels of the cave are famously narrow in some areas, and the rock fall caused the two cave explorers to get stuck in a region with few opportunities to abandon their position. As a result, both of the guys made an effort to extract themselves from the debris, but their attempts were ultimately fruitless. Due to the passage of time, their situation became ever more precarious. The group that was outside the cave became aware that the two individuals had not returned, and after waiting for a number of hours, they finally decided to announce their concern. The local authorities moved quickly to initiate a rescue effort, which eventually included the participation of expert cave rescue teams from Norway and the nations that are nearby. The operation presented a significant amount of difficulty because of the treacherous and steep topography of the cave. There were a number of challenges that rescue crews had to overcome, including unstable rock formations, tight pathways, and the need to thoroughly evaluate the safety of the location in order to avoid more rock falls. 
When the remains of Burla and Hegstad were ultimately discovered, it was established that the two men had perished as a result of asphyxia and injuries experienced from the rockfall. Moving on, at the beginning of 2005, Dave Shaw was resolute in his mission to rescue the body of Dion Dreyer. In other words, Dave was going to bring Dreyer's bones back to his family. Despite the fact that he had been dead for 10 years and had fallen 270 meters into Bushman's Hole in South Africa. So, he was able to locate Dion's body without any difficulty and attached a line to it so that he could bring it up in a secure manner. However, when he attempted to cover the deceased with a body bag, the skull broke free of its surrounding tissue. Thus, the body began to float away and attempting to capture it developed into a brutal occurrence. So, Dave took a more rapid inhale and went underwater. Soon after, he began to breathe at a rate that was beyond the capacity of his rebreather. In other words, he was experiencing confusion as a result of the carbon dioxide that was intended to be filtered out, but instead was going back into his lungs. His attempts to get Dion inside the bag were becoming more reckless and negligent, and he was continuing to work on it for an excessive amount of time. After waiting for five minutes, Dave finally gave up and began swimming upward. However, his light became entangled in the cave line that was tied to Dion's body. As a result, Dave made an effort to get free, but Dion's body was holding him down at the time. He was in a state of terror, his breathing becoming more rapid than ever before. Thus, Dave lost consciousness and passed while submerged in the cave, close to the body that he had attempted to rescue. Lastly, in 2002, divers exploring the dark depths of Poganica Bay, Croatia, made a discovery that would haunt them for years to come. Deep below the surface, in the tangled corridors of an underwater cave, they found the lifeless body of a diver, MK. The scene was chilling in its own right, but as investigators pieced together the details, it became clear that the truth was far more unsettling than anyone could have imagined. MK had been alone when he died. His diving mask had been torn from his face, and a long, sharp knife, 30 centimeters, was lodged in his chest. The police assumed that MK had been part of a cave diving trip with friends, and that one of them had stabbed him during some sort of altercation. Perhaps the murderers had panicked and thrown the body into the cave, hoping to erase any trace of their crime. But forensic evidence soon revealed a horrifying truth. It wasn't murder that had claimed MK's life. It was something far more terrifying. As it turned out, MK had become lost in the cave's labyrinth. The maze of passages had disoriented him, and before he knew it, his oxygen tank had emptied. Struggling to breathe in the suffocating darkness, MK swam desperately, hoping to find something, anything that could save him. So, he spotted a faint bubble of air trapped between two large boulders. It was his last hope a tiny pocket of air in the midst of an unforgiving, crushing silence. He swam toward it, gasping for breath, but the air wasn't enough. As MK fought to stay conscious, he must have known this was it. In those final moments, when the agony of drowning was too much to bear, MK did something that no one expected. With his last ounce of strength, he took the knife and plunged it deep into his chest. MK died alone trapped in the black depths of the cave. In addition, the investigators were left with more questions than answers. For more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like this video. Comment below which case you find the most terrifying, and don't forget to press the bell icon for future notifications.